All right, so we're back with the second part of the video where we're trying to connect our front end in built in C sharp WBF to a back end in database. So if you haven't uh, in the first part, what we did was we were just simply making connection to the database. And in this part, we're going to make sure that the username and password are both authenticated against the database. So if you haven't looked at the first part yet, it is very important to look at it and uh, whatever is the name of this uh, video it'll say part one of one so it's very important to check that out before you attempt to uh, continue with this one so uh, let's go ahead and first we are going to build our uh, in our PD layer our folder we are going to build a class all right now this class will be a simple users class which will have a username private string username and then here we'll have a variable for the password as well okay now we'll have one constructor that accepts two arguments password and uh, username and I know I have it commented out and I can just uncomment it but I want you guys to see what I'm doing so before we do that we're gonna have our um, methods username and this is a property so and then in our setter all right username is equal to value what a value it receives so here will be username is equal to the username it receives And I know some people might just argue that, oh, I can simply have it uh, uh, initialized uh, through the constructor directly. I can initialize my class variables, but uh, we are also going to need these getters and setters when we are retrieving the information. So it's better uh, if we just use them over here. And now we can have password is equal to password all right so this is done I don't need whatever code I wrote here before this is gone so our now we're done with our problem domain layer we have our class over here so the next thing we're going to do is we will write a method in our helper class all right uh, that is going to receive uh, in uh, two arguments the first argument will be a string a query and the second argument will also be a string which will be the username so we'll make this a static method all right and this is going to return to us a mysql command okay and then we'll call this string query and then string username uh, all right now because things might fail we'll put this in a try catch block and in the catch we'll just have the exception and well the first thing we'll do is we will uh, verify if the connection is open or not to our database so if the connection is closed all right the connection if I rec might recall you the connection is this class variable all right which is already established by uh, this method in the beginning but however uh, just for safety net if this thing is uh, if the connection is empty or you know it might cause trouble so we will open it make sure the connection opens then connection dot create command all right this is where we will write our command and cmd the command type will be a text good now the command text will be the query argument that we're going to receive this all right so whatever query we receive over here is going to be given to the command over here now then we are also going to assign parameters to this so the parameters we will add it with value and they will be 
called at username all right and this will be the value we're going to assign to it now this username that you're seeing over here will be written in our query uh, so there will be an arg there will be a place where it's going to say select everything from our a uh, users table where username equals at username so it's going to look for this in the query and wherever it finds it it's going to assign the username to it and then we're going to execute our query all right and then just right after that we're going to close our connection so no loose ends are left open and in case things do fall apart we're just going to close our connection to be to make sure no connections are left open and then here we're going to return our command all right sorry about that so that is done now the next thing we will do is go in our d go into our da layer in our users uh, da class and in our users da class we are going to write everything that is going to send the information to the database so in here we're gonna write private static mysql command cmd will assign null to it in the beginning static data table private static mysql adapt data adapter sda and here we'll have a method we'll call that is going to return to us uh, something of type users so again we're going to use our users class over here retrieve user and this is going to be string username so this method is going to receive the username from our uh, form now the query we're going to use over here will be select everything from uh, and you know what just for the hell of it let's run it through our database first to make sure everything is this is the exact query we're going to run where the username is equal to let's say root all right when we run this it uses this so we take this exact code that we have written over here copy it if you can't if you, those of you who can't see it this is exactly where i wrote so we take this as it is copy come on this side and we just paste it over here now instead of root we are going to write open bracket at username now if you recall correctly uh, when we went to our DB helper you see username right here and then username right here so this is the username that is going to re get replaced dynamically on the other side CMD we will use our helper class and in there we're going to use the run query method that we just wrote we're going to pass to the query that we wrote here and then we're also going to pass it the username that we uh, that we received over here so this is going to return to us a command now we are going to create a user is equal to null an object of type user that is null and if our command is not null right then we're gonna read from it data table sda is equal to new mysql data adapter cmd sda dot fill that's gonna fill our sda and we're just do a simple for each loop so data row 
dr and dt dot rows and then string u name is equal to dr user name now this username has to be exactly the same user the same thing as right here username and password because these are the labels that the field is going to have so we convert that to string and then string password is equal to dr and here we write password dot to string and now we just build our object you name and then password and that is done so we're done with this part over here and just for when we're done with this so here we write return a user now there is a chance that we might have multiple users with the same name and this loop could go on forever or an unlimited amount of time so what we're going to do is we're going to limit this to make sure it returns to us one one user all right so that returns to us only one user and we can just write limit one over here all right this will limit to us it will only find one for us so if it finds the first one it will grab the first one there is no chance that it's going to return to us multiple users so we're done with this side now let's go back to our form so on our form let's do the most easiest button first is the exit one the exit one uh, double click on the button and you can just write this code this dot close what it's going to do it's just going to shut down it's going to shut down the application and then if you click on the login button it's going to take you here so for your login button all right the first thing we'll do let me zoom in again we will grab the username all right and we also grab the password i apologize if you're hearing the kids in the back again uh my cousin is uh my uncle is actually here with my cousins and their babies so that's why they're yelling i can't ask them to shut up because they're babies and they do not understand what shut up means <laughs> so here we're gonna call the retrieve user method that we just wrote in our uh, users da class so users da dot retrieve user and the user is expecting a username so we give it the username that we just received over here all right and then if a user dot password because it's an object of type user now we can reference to the property that we just wrote earlier in our users class dot equals and then we want to make sure it's equal to the password that we received over here which is this password over here if it is then we just pop a message to the user dot show login success all right and then we're going to write view layer dot main menu is equal to m sorry is equal to new view layer dot main menu this is referring to the form right here main menu the reason why i have to specify the view layer is because uh, somewhere else i have another thing called main menu uh, which is if i try to use it if i just use main menu it's going to conflict with that name so here i'm going to call it m dot show so that's going to open the form for us else message box dot show login failed please try again let's be nice to the users so we can just clear the text box for them 
that's going to clear the first text box that will clear the second text box and voila now we're done with the coding let's test it so right click on it rebuild the solution everything is success so that means we have no syntax errors let's run it to see if we have any logical errors connection is success application loads let's try a wrong user first so I'm gonna call it uh, root and one two three four five six as username login fail please try again so the else clause is working the clearing is also working let's try with root and admin login is success and voila our main menu form is being loaded I, I didn't have uh, time to draw this menu form but the idea is that if you had something drawn on this form it will pop up pop as well all right so there you go we have it you know what let's just put a button to make sure that it's actually gonna load let's put two buttons all right run it again and this time we're gonna try it with John so the username is John I forgot his password let's go check it John what's John's password John one two three four so the password is John one two three four login is success and there you go our main menu has the form that's being shown up so if you put anything over here it's also gonna get shown up over here uh, thank you very much for watching the solution there's going to be a link available to this solution um, and uh, you guys can test it out uh, again uh, thank you for watching and if you have any if you have just been following the second video I suggest you go watch the first video to really understand how to connect to the database uh, and uh, in the future I will try to make uh, the same type of video with uh, Microsoft SQL Server and Access and if you have any questions or comments, just leave it in the bottom and I'll try to get back to you as soon as uh, possible. Thank you very much.